How you doing? Danny De Hicks, my name. I'm in the process of doing a whole lot of new workshops and I was going through my PDF files and I found one on SEO tips and advice and I thought it was too good uh, to not go over the content that I discussed. So I, I own a business networking company and the idea behind it is I used to do 15 minute sort of uh, little wee workshops teaching people some of the stuff that I've learned over the years. So I've been doing website development and also SEO stuff for about, I don't know, maybe too long, over 20 years at least. And this is one of my favourites. So before I revitalise it and make it more modern, I thought it would be worthwhile while documenting this as a YouTube video and it may give you a bit of understanding how SEO works. So let's get into it. I'll just flip into a work browser and this was my PowerPoint presentation and it's called uh, SEO Tips and Advice by Danny DeHeck, who is me. So often when I'm talking to people, um, typical isn't it, is we talk about SEO, search engine optimization, and there's so many facets to it. I actually liken it to imagine that you have one glass full of water. So for example, you could actually have a really good URL that identifies your brand or your business, and that would be equivalent to having one glass of water full. You may also have some really good titles with the content that you put on the internet. You may also have alt tags in all your images. You may also have file names named correctly. And along with that, you may even have a well-structured website that is search engine friendly. But by just having one good glass full of water isn't really going to cut the mustard. You need to have a well-balanced website. And that's why I put together this PowerPoint presentation. So by having all the glasses full, you'll have a competitive advantage. Now, you won't really need to worry about SEO if you're the only one selling purple elephants on the internet. But once upon a time, I actually had 45 uh, rental car brands advertising within my uh, network of websites. And I had to come up with a different strategy for each of them so they could actually get a piece of the pie when people were searching for car hire, transportation, automobile hire or maybe ski vehicles or four-wheel drive vehicles and I had to come up with a different phrase. So I've always said to my clients, market what you do, not who you are. This does really apply most of the time. So for example, if I was a rental car company, for example, maybe Ace Rental Cars or A to B Rental Cars, which were the two big companies that I used to market, when you search for them on the internet, their website will come up regardless. So they've got brand awareness. However, if you didn't know about those companies and you wanted to search for a brand, maybe like um, Rental Car New Zealand, then it would depend on whether they had the domain name to match or content to match or images to match. So often I would build the back end of the website around a phrase rather than their existing brand which comes up in the search engines anyway. So if I was to take the word SEO, and build um, a content around it, I would literally go and find a word cloud on the internet and type in the phrase that I'm hoping that I'm going to dominate on the internet. And then I would find words wrapped around it that mean all things. So for example, let's just use SEO because we're talking about SEO. I would write, make sure that my website incorporated words like rank, top, improve, visibility, submission, tools, optimizer, popularity, and I would write a set of 15, maybe uh, 10 or 20 blogs incorporating every word that I can find associated with the word I'm trying to capitalize on. Does that make sense? And what I used to call this to get people's attention because death by PowerPoint was always a bit of a worry. So what is, why would I do all that? Because the internet cross-references words. So it's by word association so if somebody was to search for uh, rental car New Zealand and I also had an article on my website maybe featuring some itineraries, then the cross-referencing would help pull that website up into the results. All right, so enough of that. 
So my, my point to this whole exercise was content is king. At one point or another, it didn't really matter whether your content was optimized for the search engines. As long as you had that content on the internet, the search engines would read through your content and find paragraphs and mash them all together and have them come up in the search result. And that still applies mostly today. 80% of search engine optimization or SEO is about your content. Now, if you own Apple and you have a very strong brand, you don't really need to worry about people not being able to find you on the internet. But when you want to be found on the internet and you are a nobody, then you really need to rely on your content. And content is king. So once upon a time, I used to have a... A client with me who used to do scenic flights and when I was hitchhiking around New Zealand as a mobile internet consultant I knocked on these people's doors and I said hey have you guys ever thought about having a website to market your scenic flights and he says ironically I have is that what you can help me with I certainly can I said this was back in 1995 maybe 1996 so I used to get a lot of criticism from other let's keep it simple website designs like Apple can get away with now they've established their brand. But no one, there was at the time in Franz Joseph, which is on the South Island of New Zealand, there was only five other companies they were competing with who did scenic flights. And this particular scenic flight company that I'm about to show you, the strategy I used to market their website, only uh, had a brochure. And the brochure had flight one, flight two, flight three, flight four, and flight five as their scenic brochures. So I looked at it and I said to the guy, why do people do flight one? Well, a lot of, we get a lot of people from Asia and they've never seen snow before and they love landing on the, on the, uh, the, on the top of the glacier and seeing snow. And we call this a snow landing. And I thought, well, maybe a lot of people are searching for snow landings. So I rewrote their brochure, even though I'm dyslexic, and I incorporated every word that I could think of, just like that word cloud thing I talked about earlier around the word SEO. And if you can look at the content here, you can see that I've mentioned words like helicopter scenic flights, private charters, uh, helicopter flights with an S, some without, some with, coastal regions, New Zealand, flight scenes, snow landings, Westland National Park, helicopter company, uh, trampers, hikers, film crews, corporate crews, anything I can think of that is around that word, that was the words on the homepage of the website. So way back around this time, website designers were making it that when somebody got to the homepage of the website, they had click here to enter, like it was a grand opening. I've always designed my website like a house. No one uses the front door. Open all the windows and let people come in any entrance they like. You may be surprised. And that was the strategy I often used when developing websites, which I used to call search engine friendly websites. And if the client wanted a, a website that was uh, beautiful and like a catalog, then I'd often tell them to go and design another website um, that isn't associated to this one, because this one was designed to outrank their competitors in the search engines. So the first thing I recommend to people is having a good URL. So this company at the time was called Alpine Adventures. Now I said to them what they could do is go away and get a good domain name like alpineadventures.co.nz. Go away and register that, give it to me, and when people type it into the web browser or you're printing your brochures, we'll use that domain name. However, because I want to compete in the search engines, I'm going to get a domain name called scenic-flights. And would you believe they didn't really like that domain name at the start because it wasn't nice to say on the phone because no one really knows what that word hyphen means. So to a search engine, the hyphen actually means space. And that means if somebody searches scenic flights forward slash helicopter, it, it would help fill up one of those glasses of water I talked about. Having a good domain name if you're capitalizing on search phrases is everything. So I've got some other examples of domain names that I purchased for other clients along the way. You can assume this one here is for a hunting and fishing outfit. Hedge cutter, this guy cuts hedges. 
Uh, NZ Electronics, try it now. Get on the internet and search for NZ Electronics and see who comes up number one because I've built that whole website around a phrase, not a brand. And you can't see this one because my head's in the way and I'm not going to move because I'm stubborn. There you go. Talks. That domain name, I'm going to use it when I'm a public speaker one day because it's nice and short. And if you are watching this from the United States, you might be thinking, why don't they get the .com? If I use scenic-flights.com, it would be telling the search engines that I'm over in America or I'm global. And we were targeting people who are coming to New Zealand. And that, that domain name uh, prefix is the A-grade domain name prefix for New Zealand. So you can see even my own domain, danny.co.nz, is brilliant. So for years, I was trying to capitalise on the phrase Danny NZ. So having a domain name that's danny.co.nz will help. It won't be everything, but it will fill up one of those glasses of water. These days, I actually use the domain name deheck.com. All right. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually see if I can um, get my mouse back somewhere. I'm going to move me over to the other side. No, my computer's frozen, so let's forget about that. Uh, so my travel and tourism business, when I got a good domain name, I didn't use the hyphens. But you can probably see that my domain name was called New Zealand NZ NZ Limited was my actual company name, and I had a domain name to match. And you can see I actually also had the short version of my domain name. The purpose of that was when people on the phone, I would say my Domain name is New Zealand NZ, and they would go nznz.co.nz, and I'd go, no, New Zealand in full, NZ directly after it, no spaces, no hyphens, .co.nz, and they just never could get it right, so I decided to get a short domain name, and that's how I worked. Now, the last one that you can't see is called Dunedin-Accommodation, and I still use this one today for one of my clients, and this domain name is ideal if somebody was searching for Dunedin Accommodation. This particular client actually had three different types of accommodation and they are called Sahara Guest House and Bed and Breakfast. So we could, I would encourage them to have sahara.co.nz as their domain name and would sit that on top of the website. If you search for Sahara, you will find their website first anyway. But we were capitalising on a phrase like Dunedin Accommodation, forward slash hotel, no, motel, forward slash guest house, forward slash holiday. And, uh, and that was a really good structure for their website. Anyway, so that's just a little bit of education about good URLs. Let's get into uh, some other things that may help your website uh, give it a better ranking in search engines. SSL. Now, some websites don't have a S. So when you type in HTTPS, it's actually telling the search engines that you have a certificate of authenticity and they give those websites preference. So if you didn't have one because you think we don't take credit cards over the internet versus your competitor who does have one, the search engines will literally outrank you because you had a secure certificate. Most website hosts have them. I personally use a company called, excuse me, wpengine.com. When I set up my website, they let me have a free version of an SSL. Once upon a time, I used to pay an additional $200 a year to have that certificate, but it was of good value. So these days, if you're a bit cheap on your web hosting, you'll probably find that your cheap web host will charge you for an SSL, but a lot of the other um, good web hosting companies now provide you a free one. So just so you know how that works... Uh, the category structure of a website is absolutely everything when you want to have a good website. So remember the scenic flight company who had flight one, flight two, flight three, flight four, flight five? Well, that wasn't good. No one's going to search for flight one or flight two. So I went through their brochure and I looked at the first. So when they were doing scenic flights in France and uh, Fox, uh, I went through and worked out the big phrase was snow landings. Uh, a lot of people were doing Mount Cook flights and they were searching for these terms. Uh, Twin Glacier, people would literally want to go see Fox and Franz Joseph Glacier. Uh, the Grand Tour was something where you could go see all three of them. Uh, Mount Cook Special, 
uh, scenic flights, and also these people at the time, they had a cafe, I think they still do, called Cook's Saddle. Uh, when their other division, which was Tekapo Helicopters, uh, I went through and, and once again come up with having words uh, rather than uh, numbers and silly names, even though they had the same category structure. So I think you can get the gist of what I'm actually talking about. So these, at the time, they had Franz Joseph, Tekapo and Haas Helic Services, and they also had Kai Cora and they had the Whale Watch. So, of course, Whale Watch Tour, I built the whole domain name around phrases and URLs. It may not look that pretty. However, when the search engine looks at it, if the URL matches the content and the images, which I'm about to show you, it helps it come up uh, more than people who don't. On the right-hand side of this uh, diagram over there, uh, pointing the other way over there, you can see that the names aren't long-winded, they're very short and precise, but the location of those names uh, were pointing to those pages. So it didn't look too cluttered, and also I used a concertina um, sort of category structure. Now, ironically, this company, unfortunately, uh, had a crash, and they had to close down the company and rebrand it. And because the one of the directors... Uh, couldn't be in the company anymore, they actually set up a brand new company from scratch because they actually had, I think, about 63 from memory people on um, paid leave for about six months until they could start up another company. So the new company decided to hire a marketing company and then all of a sudden they looked at the traffic that the website was getting. They actually finished up paying me $5,000 for the domain name scenic-flights.co.nz but along the way, they lost seeing the value of having such a good domain name. And I'm pretty sure now the new company is actually called um, hullyservices.co.nz. Now, that is really only going to be a benefit to them if somebody knows that company and searches for them. However, I still would have maintained that they should have used the domain name Scenic Hyphic Flights because my saying is market what you do, not who you are, right? Okay, so when you have an image on your website, uh, and you take it with your camera. The file name is often called DS7-318617. Now, if you ever upload a image to your uh, website and you call that image that name, and I'll explain this more in a wee while, I bet it comes up in the search engines. So why wouldn't renaming the images to search terms that you want to come up be of an advantage? So when I was building a website, normally having three or four maybe five images per page, is good for the search engines because it's keeping it well balanced because it's about the architecture. It's like a tree. You don't want it, you want it to be like structured like a little bush rather than big limbs going off everywhere. So I used to rename all the images that were on each page to match the content. So to keep it simple, Scenic Flights was the uh, domain name. So I would literally include at least three images called Scenic Flights 0102. I would also hyphenate them so the search engines know that uh, there is a space between each of the image. I would also capitalise the scenic word and the word flight because search engines give preference to titles. So my name is Danny D. Heck. It is spelled capital D, A N N Y. And then, because D E in Dutch means the, uh, D E is lowercase, and then Heck, which is capital H E K. If I'm spelling it like that, the search engine will look at it as a name and they will give names preference. So, like-mindedly, when I'm doing file names, I always capitalise them like a title so I get a little bit more preference. Whether it works or not, I'll let you decide, but from my experience, it used to work nicely, thank you very much. If I was getting clever, and don't get too clever, I'm just telling you the extremes I needed to go to when representing 45 different rental car companies basically selling rental cars for New Zealand. I would also go through every image and I would think about the best name uh, for the files and eventually I would have a website that may consist of maybe 50 or even 150 images. Each of those images would be named for a phrase that I was trying to capitalise on. So scenic flights, you can imagine they had a photo gallery every part of the photo gallery was there to entice the search engines to index the photos. 
of the traffic for the website actually came from Google Images. However, because people were visiting the website uh, regularly, we get brownie points for that as well. So don't underestimate saying, well, I don't want people to land on my website because of an image. The search engine is saying, this website's getting visited regularly. It's gaining popularity. It must be the right book. Imagine walking into a library, going up to the librarian and saying, I want a book about rental cars. She goes away and she looks up and she goes, oh my goodness, there's 1.5 million books about rental cars. How does she know what 10 to bring back to you? She will be looking at things like, well, this one has images on the topic. Uh, this one has a domain name on the topic. Oh, this one has content on the topic. Oh, uh, you know, all those sort of things will help her bring back the top 10. And then what you will find is people will also see the librarian carrying a whole lot of books to the counter and think, I better refine my search a little bit more. So then people might be searching for Scenic Flights South Island. So now the librarian comes back with 30,000 books. Well, it's not so bad. Well, let's narrow it down. Where are we going? We're going to the West Coast. Scenic Flights West Coast. Now she brings back 10,000 books. And then they narrow it right down to Scenic Flights Fox, Scenic Flights Franz Joseph. And now we're competing with those five companies. However, I don't know about you, but when I'm at the top of the list, I often know, think that's there for a reason, and it's about popularity. All these things I'm showing you is helping that happen. Etiquette. Something else I talk about uh, when teaching people SEO. If you're writing content on your website, do not write things in all caps so it pops out and people can see it. It's uh, hopeless. I don't like reading it. I'm dyslexic and I actually find it very hard to read. However, sometimes it is nice using a little bit of different flavoured font because then it shows that there's been more human input in the content that's online. So it's not all bad, but what I recommend doing is using style sheets to capitalise words. So that means when the search engine runs itself over those words, it's reading them as normal text, not all capitals. And I, you can learn about style sheets in another workshop that I do one day. Okay, so good old trick a few years ago, and I told you this presentation is old. I used to have hidden words on a white background, and the words used to be white as well. And then I thought, well, at least my customer who's looking at my web page wouldn't actually see uh, the horrible words that I'm trying to do to fool the search engines. And we used to always put words at the very top of the web page because that was the first thing the search engines would index. Those days don't work anymore. Search engines are clever enough to say he's got a white background, he's got white text, he's trying to fool us, we're just going to ignore him and his content. Broken links. Now, for years, I have not linked to many other people's websites. I only link to websites that I know that will be online. Now, for example, if I linked off to the tourism board thinking, oh, that's going to be really handy. These people are coming to do a scenic flight in New Zealand. And uh, having a link to the New Zealand tourism board's website is going to be a great thing. As soon as the New Zealand tourism board website hires some marketing company, they're going to trash all the links and all those links are going to show as broken links on your website. And that means that when the librarian comes back and you open the book and they click on a link, it's going to be broken. And the librarian is going to say, well, this book's got a problem. I'll leave it over to the side at the moment unless there's no other book to give anyone. So don't link to other people unless you can make sure that they don't update their website and you have broken links. Now, titles. That is one very, that is the most important part of every page of your website. I've always been competing with website developers who think a nice, clean, five-page website is all that's needed to promote this business. The average rental car website, for example, and even the scenic flight ones I'm talking about, was around about 80 to 150 pages of content. And every single one of those pages had as much power on the internet as a one-page website. So literally, when I'm fishing... Instead of just using one hook, I'm using a net with 150 hooks in it that is going to attract more fish. Now, when people get to the website, there's going to be a header and a footer that represents this business. If they land on one of those pages and it's maybe just a simple contact us form, they should be able to navigate to the homepage and start from there. And if you look at the statistics, most people look at about three or four pages before they go to the booking page or click contact us or read frequently asked questions or go to the about us section on the website. So you can have all these hooks in the ocean. 
Okay, so you might think I'm going to promote my website. I'm going to go to Facebook. I'm going to go chat to people, and then I'm going to blast my website to everyone. Don't do that. If you want to uh, really offer value to people, use your blog within your website. Uh, create content that people are asking questions about, and then maybe politely direct message them, which is private message them, a link to a page on your website that may be useful to them. So don't do it in bulk. Uh, you can certainly point people to different pages of your website, but don't think you can go to big, large chat rooms and blast your website address. It's kind of like going to the mall and standing up on your soapbox and yelling out, I have a website. If anyone want to come and have a look at it, people think you're mental and they won't do it. So it doesn't really work, but use uh, that um, very carefully. Don't copy other people's content. Oh, that's a good idea. See that one there? Don't copy other people's content. I had uh, a friend of mine thought that it would be okay to copy some of my content, and we had duplicate content on the internet. Now, I used to use a uh, 130-page itinerary on 10 of my rental cars' websites. It didn't work negatively uh, for the website, it basically meant that out of that 130 pages of information, I would find that two pages would come up in the search results and then two pages of another part of it would come up in another rental car website. So it didn't work totally negative, but if you're actively out there trying to fool the search engines by posting it as new content, you won't get any advantage. So what, what it basically means, you may not get penalised for it, but it won't, you won't get any brownie points for it. And it may only read a couple of the pages and go, I've seen this before, and index a little bit of it. But if you wrote 130 itineraries for Travelling New Zealand and you were the only person using it, it would be an amazing advantage for you, uh, if that makes sense. So when I was writing content, even though every rental car company basically has an economy, a compact and an intermediate and a four-wheel drive and a people mover, I would try to write it uniquely as I could. And when you're writing content, you really want to write content that people are searching for. So it's a very hard thing to do, but do not use the same content if you can help it. So copy, buying blogs of other companies and put them on your website that have been used by 100 websites, no real advantage. Now, this may look like a bit of a mine thing, but this is what I used to do. My ex-wife was really good at wording, and we used to go through that word cloud, and we used to write the titles for each uh, page of the website. So we used to have a few that weren't overanalyzed, but all the main pages of the website, we, you, for example, this one, I think there's around about 25 pages, and we used to make sure that we had evenly distributed the titles and each one of these titles would represent a page. So for the average website, we would create a homepage, an About Us page. Uh, you saw all the tours that this company did. They had about 15 tours. So each of those tours would have their own unique title. And then we'd have a booking page. We'd have a fax booking page at the time. We would have a quotation page. So that would give us three additional pages. And then we'd have three additional titles in each page. Uh, a very important but we used to write them all out in a line like you see here and we'd get a really good indication. So you can notice that if, if wording is everything, so you've got west face of Mount Cook, people would actually, trampers would search for that. So that's not a high keyword, it is a keyword. We've got scenic flights, we've got South Island, we've got Haas World uh, Heritage Area. I'm sure we have west, west Lake in there and um, I would filter those through. We've even got a, a, a general one here which is like jet boating, uh, fishing, diving, hunting, etc. So you get the idea, but when you're doing them, don't want them all the same, and you want to make sure you have uh, limit the amount of filler words that you have. It's good if it reads, nice. It's better if it does, because I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. So every page that you have on your website, especially blogging, I'm a, I'm a very good blog. Now I wrote a blog, well my ex-wife actually wrote a blog, um, it must be a good 15 years ago, and it's called New Zealand Slang Words. And it's not even a big blog. That blog gets between maybe 350 to 900 visits per month. It's been getting that many visits to us for the last 15 years. So if you write a good blog and put it out there on the internet and it's trending or it's evergreen content, you can get traffic to your website, organic traffic, free of charge, uh, forever and a day. 
Uh, just recently, I wrote something that's trending. That's other, another good trick, and it was about a backpack company. If you look through my content, you will find it, and it's called Smart Backpack Scams. Do a search for that, and you'll see a blog of mine comes up. Now, that blog has actually uh, received 700 visits in 30 days from people who are searching to see if the Smart Backpack is a scam. Uh, and it's a different story, but that is what I call trending content because I know that there's a company out there actively trying to scam people, so I wrote a, a content. I mean, this may not work with you, but if you do a bit of research on what is actually trending at the moment. So another re example, you could write a blog about Clubhouse at the moment. If you don't know what Clubhouse is, do a search for Clubhouse, and you'll find it some uh, social media, um, what do they call it? It's um, drop-in audio social media so you can sit there and chat to people now that's a trending thing that's happened at the moment so you should be writing about that in your blog when you do write a blog you want to make sure that the title because it's one of these glasses of water is between 50 and 60 um, seven characters long I think it's actually 63 now because I said as I said I'm redoing all these powerpoints because I'm putting together workshops teaching people how to do this stuff uh, a meta tag description, when you're using WordPress, which is the only platform I reckon you should use, there's an area that's called, um, uh, I've forgotten what it's called actually, but it, there's an area where, I think it's called meta tag, I've forgotten, but anyway, uh, you'll figure it out, but there's an area where you can put a few descriptive words about what the page is about. So if I was to write a blog about the backpack scam that I talked about, then I should write a summary of around about 150 to 200 words that summarizes that whole page and I use that as um, my meta tag. I'm still trying to think about it. Now, when, you, when you're laying out your page, uh, there's, the internet is looking for different types of font. So it's called H1, H2, H3, H4, H5. I personally never use four or five because they're the wee tiny fonts. But if you have uh, pick up a mobile phone and you've decided to read one of my blogs, you'll find that I don't play around with the fonts too much because you can enlarge the font on your phone. And when you're doing that, it's looking for the font type, like H1 is normally the header, and H2 is the subheader, and H3 is normally the content. And that will mean that your content will be uh, readable and display nicely on all devices. Focus keyword is also a very good thing. Uh, for example, smart backpacks is my focus keyword when I wrote that article and I wrote everything around it. So way back at the start of this, we showed you a word cloud and it was SEO and we found words around it. The focus keyword for if I was writing something about SEO would be SEO. Hope that helps. All right, and the last one is images. We've already mentioned that before. Uh, renaming images uh, to match uh, .jpg is a good format. Uh, if you're doing graphics at the top of your website and it's a logo, you want to use PNGs, but make sure, um, try it. You search for Danny DeHeck in Google Images, you'll see that I, I, I own that. Um, using bold and italics is a really good idea as well um, because it shows that you've taken time and it isn't mass produced. Years ago, the search engines really hated companies that were just dumping information on the internet. But if you set things out and you put pictures around and you make it look lovely, they can sell, they can read through it and go, look, this one has six bold words, it has italics, it has speech marks, it's, it's got good spelling. Uh, we're going to give this a preference. And when you hold your mouse over the images, the alt tags come up. Uh, the other thing that alt tags uh, do uh, help is people with disabilities, for example, blind people. If they are blind, they um, put their, um, their, they have the disability thing on their phone and it will actually tell them what the image is all about. So having descriptive uh, alt tags for the images is certainly helping people out. Okay, so when you get on the internet and you've done all this stuff, of course it's going to be easy, and of course if you need any help, you know where to come. Go to dehick.com and book some time with me and I'll have a look at your website in real time and tell you where you could do some improvements. But if you search for scenic flights in the internet at one point of time, this is the result that would come up in the search engines. Notice I haven't quite got my 150 characters right, so what happens then, it goes dot, 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 it doesn't work against you, it just means the search engines try to shorten it back. The next thing is, as you can see, Scenic Flights, Franz Joseph, Glacier, and Mount Cook region, then dot, 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 it means it's not perfect. If you did have it perfect, 
perfect. Uh, like I did for my business networking company, uh, Elite Six Business, meet people and generate new business. It was exactly 63 characters or 67 at the time, and it didn't have the dot, 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 and it looks a lot nicer. You can see that my meta tag description is perfect. It fits into that. Now, if you were a government organisation and you didn't need to worry about it, then you wouldn't spend all the additional time after you've designed your website making it look beautiful, as you can see for our Parliament homepage. They don't have a meta tag description, and if you do a search one day for untitled pages, or in this case, homepage, you'll be surprised, you, you may be surprised how many pages come up in the search results um, that haven't bothered to do any SEO. Now, if you're going away and you're getting your website designed uh, by somebody, you're probably going to get different quotes. How I do my quotes is normally I charge in 10 hour or 15 hour implements. Most of the work when I'm developing a website is actually on the structure. And anyone can design a, look, a logo and put a nice thing at the top of a website. Uh, anyone can make it look pretty in colours. And you might be paying for a website designer, but you really want to buy, um, buy a website of somebody who has built it keyword friendly and the whole structure of the website is made so it's an awesome force on Google. And every aspect of what you do, uh, you really want to get in bed with Google and you want to make it easy for them to index your website. And you want to make sure you've got content going on there regularly as well. I personally have had two websites in my career that have received 25,000 individual IP visits per day. And one of them was New Zealand's Information Network, which actually consisted of over 100 travel and tourism related companies, just like the one I showed you, Scenic Flights New Zealand. And over the years, I've lost them. They have gone away to these slick website development companies who have built them these Christage uh, websites that look really good but don't perform as well as the ones that I used to deliver. And that's my uh, competition. So if you want hand, a hand on doing any SEO work or really getting a good understanding, these days I don't actually do development work. I actually have uh, workshops on my website. And I didn't want to rewrite this workshop to the modern world version of it without first documenting something that I used to know so much about 15 years ago. So I hope you've enjoyed listening to uh, me uh, go down memory lane. And uh, as I've said, if you want to have anything, just uh, by all means reach out to me and I'd love to hear from you. And hope you've enjoyed my video.